We start from a clean sheet. An all-new adventure begins with the new generation of supercars. And a great start by both the boys off the front row. Kostecki leads through turn one, but runs very wide. Do they get through cleanly? They do. A remarkable start. Very, very equal between Cam Waters and Kostecki. Van Giesbergen got a ripper start, moved right across to the inside, and is now in behind Feeney. Do they get through turn two OK? Yes, at the moment they have. Nice job. Cold tyres, but cleanly through turn one, and seemingly they've done a pretty good job of managing turn two. That was a critical start for everybody to get out the other side clean. A little spin there for Anton. That's under investigation at turn eight, grabbing Di Pasquale. So this is the dive. And he did, did they hit? He, he, he had a big go to get down in there. He actually, see how far to the right he is on the dirty side of the road. There would be no grip there. So he's got right in there, and it would have only been very light contact. Now, this is this different line that we've been talking about. As they crest over the rise, see how wide Cam is? He turns it from a wider point, turns it back across, which means the braking area. He's not really blocking. He, oh, he's run wide by himself this time. This is going to be interesting. What happens here? Do they get round together? Shane tries to do the crisscross. No way. And in for Waters. Had enough. <laughs> SVG in. We're just doing... We've got sparks coming off the computers on our fuel numbers. Because for sure, Cam Waters was racing Feeney after that stop. But I, I think that little mistake is, was a genuine mistake and popped behind. Now, now, one of the things that's just happened in there with Van Gisbergen is another car has come out in front. So, so Slade's come out in front. What happens here? So Waters gets a big run. He actually gives the wall a little rub on the right-hand side because he knew how important it is to fire up the hill. Oh, awkward moment for McCauley. Jones, Pizza Hut entry, just whacks that exit. Was awkward. James Golding, James Courtney is the car in the Snowy River Caravan's teal entry on the other side of the road. So uh, Alistair McVeigh's just told David Reynolds to use the radio button on the steering wheel, not the paddle, just hoping that he's got comms with him. This is the view, by the way, from James Courtney's car of that replay of what we just saw. This is turn 12. She's lively on the exit of the corner there. You saw the amount of opposite lock in second gear. Oh, that was awkward. That was awkward. Oh, twice. So Randall makes contact with both Scott Pye uh, and with, I think it was Jack LeBrock. This is the other view. So at this point, feel the other car thumping and then he's kind of trapped by the cone marker there because he's got to get to the right of it uh, by regulation and then he's made that second contact down there so he may get a slap for that now this is critical this is the one that you just raised as well this is Mostert sneaky by David Reynolds he's got some comms issues at the moment that was nice easily down the inside of turn eight there for Chas Mostert teammate here and yes but that's the whole purpose of being warned on the radio to make sure that you don't ask too much of the braking performance and the, the balance of the car going up into turn two i'm going to jump on here with van gisberg and he's got a hefty lead 4.6 seconds he's got 1.3 seconds brock feeney over cam waters as well in the battle for second to third so let's just stay on board enjoy the sights and sounds of the new car Next opportunity will be down at the hairpin at turn 11. He does have pace. Can he apply it? He got a better exit then. He got a much better exit then than Brody, who wagged the tail. So he is making a big impression on the back of that car through turn 10. How brave, how much throttle percentage do they carry over the bumps? 
surface change under brakes down there. He runs it out wide, and then the other bloke turns tighter, but he's on the wrong side of the road now, Mostert, and Brody's well aware of that when they get to the final corner. Can he crisscross him on exit here? He just needs a tiny little bit more of an advantage in one or two places. Wheel spin will be a factor for both of them here. Brody clings on one more lap, 16 to go. This is great racing. He's big got a slide. slide. Got a big slide going. Got him. Now Mostert up the inside. Now he's in the position he wants to be as they make their run to two. And this time, with that extra little bit of braking, turning, grip performance that Chaz has got, he applies it well. Replay, James Courtney just getting loose on the exit of the final corner. Let's have a look at what it looks and sounds and feels like from his viewpoint. That's a pretty hefty tweak of the steering wheel and the steering arms down at turn eight down the inside. James Courtney again gets a little bit of bulldozer action from Scott Pye who sneaks on by in the Hino entry. Winding down the hill now for the last time. 160 kilometres an hour short on Esplanade. Shane Van Gisbergen and the GM Chev fans and the Van Gisbergen and Red Bull fans will be enjoying this. Negotiating his way through Hino turn seven and then on the exit of turn eight done with the busy part of the racetrack now as he exits turn nine and just gets to relax all the way to 220 odd kilometers an hour for the final run down towards turn 11. he's got a 14 second margin over his teammate pulls it up nice and straight kisses that apex and slides it out the other side he's got one corner remaining lines it up Squeezes the throttle for the final time and for the opening race of the Supercars Championship, the three-time champion gets the job done. Shane Van Gisbergen, the winner of the very first Gen 3 Supercar outing in 2023. And a margin of 14.7 seconds to his teammate Brock Feeney. Picks up his fourth podium, having won last time out in South Australia. And Cam Waters, who was right in the game throughout the day, he's going to come home in third position in car number six for Monster. Here's our race results at the end of the first of 28 for our brand new championship season. Van Gisbergen gets home by a pretty chunky margin, just under 15 seconds over his teammate, Brock Feeney. Cam Waters, the first of the Mustangs, and his old friend and rival, Chas Mostert, in behind him. Put a big effort in towards the end. Brody Kostecki, Will Brown, Andre Heimgartner, Winterbottom, Pye and Courtney, the top ten. Just outside Jack LeBrock, that was a fine effort. Ahead of David Reynolds, who didn't quite get there in the end. 